tonight. Stand Damn. the fuck did I marry? This is the interlude, basically. Um, I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me. Someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? <sighs> it's a valid question. Um, for me personally, I feel like this was traumatic to experience, to live through. Um, and I will, and I'll expound on that on another video, the aftermath of the toll that this took. Um, honestly, <laughs> and it, I know some people are going to be like, that sounds crazy. It is kind of cathartic to get this out because I cannot tell you how much of this has been internalized um, since 2020. Also, I don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter, but to my sisters, to my ladies, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. If something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. If just one woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what? Something don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a Lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Um, and I understand all of those reactions. As someone who lived it, Um, it was traumatic, but I feel like, God, it feels good to finally admit, um, what the fuck I went through. And again, by the time this is, uh, uploaded, I'm only to January of 2021, right after getting married. So when I think back on it, there's things that I'm very, very grateful for. Um, there are things that I'm just like, why? Why did you not pay attention? Why did you not question? Um, and the sad part is, I can't even begin to tell you. I don't remember the one. I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. But you hard-headed and you went anyway. And then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Like, I feel like God did everything mm -hmm. to help me as his child be like, this is not who I created to be your your helpmate. Right. And I was like, God, you taking too long. I want to get married. You taking too long. Rush to progress. And, um... You know, they're in these loving marriages and do whatever you want. <sighs> Part 17. Who the fuck did I marry? So for con They talking about I heard she talking about they talking about I heard uh, her TikTok coming through somebody car play a second ago at TikTok. I mean at Kroger's. Context and just to clarify some stuff going forward, I'm going to now call my ex husband. <laughs> I'm gonna use the name that I call him in real life, um, so that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex husband thing. So his name is Legion. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So, okay. <sighs> part 17. Fiance, boyfriend. This for the first two weeks. They talking about some <laughs> legion, like the legion of demons. <laughs> that ain't funny, dog. But that's funny, guy. Things were fine. He was still leaving the house at around six. 
a routine basically. Um, first two weeks, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, we got into like a, a routine basically. I would go to work, he would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly. Um, <laughs> they would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work. I guess he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there. If not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I said this in a previous video, but again, there were things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's going to come back later. So... I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years by the time Legion got into the picture. He was fine with the fact that I worked um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he, um, again, his dad was a retired police officer. So he was perfectly fine. In the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, co-workers. Obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week, he had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has right. met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again... Even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped. Um, something just changed. Oh, God. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by 5, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. Um, oh, God. Really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So... It was never a situation of, oh, I'm going to just sit around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, and then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background. Here we go with the manipulating chat. Here we go with the manipulating chat. Here we go with the manipulate, chat. Here we go. Here's the story. Buckle up, chat. Buckle up. Now, this is something I'm familiar with, chat. These are these are stories I'm familiar with, chat. The first, I wasn't familiar with his game. I wasn't familiar with his game. But when she broke it down, we got to like part 10, 11. She started talking about how he was lying and how why and that he how he was lying. I learned. But this is something I'm familiar with, chat. Like these are stories that I've heard. He would have little comments to me. Who was that? Are they in your office? Mm -hmm. You know. Man, you know, I never know who's who's around you because it seemed like every time I call you. And they got the whole package. I'm saying niggas are all around saying, player, boy. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. Yep. Insecurity. And I'm just like. Insecure. You know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off because it really, truly was absurd to me. Insecurity. Um, but then it became a bit more frequent. 
And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy, never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing um, around two weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio diary on January 21st is the date of the audio diary. And I talk about how maybe I had unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So two weeks pass, he starts making little comments. End of January comes, he informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't you're in the mood to look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, And I remember thinking that's not like, that's not going to work. You're not going to choose a house without me. He was like, no, I'm not going to choose the house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is Jan- This is the end of January, 2021. This is crazy, Chuck. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house. I could picture us living there. What's good, Saint? How you doing, bro? Somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right. Like, I trust you. Um, And remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. Right. So he started looking at houses. (sighs) Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with... The uh, realtor friend, he, apparently his realtor, his realtor friend's name was Scott, not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients. Right. I want to make that clear. There were two Scots. One is the realtor who was representing us, who said, hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds, I cannot show you any more houses. Right. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. That's that's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. He kept. Um, Apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm going to bring you out here so you can see it. All right. Now let's go into part 18. Uh Oh, this get crazier and crazier every time, Chuck. Okay, part 18, who the fuck did I marry? So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend, Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, so what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. He would be home every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without fail. It was so, 
I shouldn't say it was annoying, but it I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock every day that he went to work. Even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check email. So my boss was like, yeah, you're going to have to come back to the office because you're not trustworthy. And I wasn't. I mean, I totally, I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer. So I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Um, And I was, (laughs) me and another lady were the only two in there because we were the only two who did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So Legion would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. He started to come home five, five thirty, six, six thirty, sometimes seven o'clock because he was saying that he was um, looking at houses after work with his friend Scott. Okay. So it definitely was noticed that things are changing. Um, And I just, at this point, kind of emotionally and mentally, I was just like, I don't know what to do. This is the end of January. Remember I told you in part 15, I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I kind of knew I was in trouble. Damn, and that's the end of January, crazy, out, chat. I knew things were changing in a way that I was like, I hate to sound redundant, but what the fuck is going on? Damn. So he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. I had already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Cobb County. Um... <laughs> and then my attitude was kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. The reason why I want, I was so adamant to move was not because of Clayton County. It was not because of the house that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me um, somehow was interested in him. And so she would make these little comments and he would come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. So when I say that, it really seems like we got married January 5th and then... We had two weeks of peace and then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So he's looking at houses. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. Um, He did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th. So... Um, he went all out on both days. (sighs) Y'all ain't even gonna believe this story. Oh God. But I said I would share even when it makes me look bad. So the weekend after my birthday, and what I mean by that is if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car. Because again, we're married at this point. We're talking February 2021. So I take his car and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure. And I get a text message from my husband saying, someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. I think it was some, this is through text. I don't know. I think it was some dude you used to mess with. Okay. 
Um, Tequila. Do you not see this, bro? Chat, is y'all not listening to this story, bro? Bro is capping out the front teeth, bro. I was like, what are you talking about? Teeth, and he was like, I'm telling you, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, talking about they're looking for me? Especially because before I met my husband, I was working I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I had not dealt with dated anything with anyone for about a year before I met him in March of 2020. So I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? So I finished the pedicure. I head home. Once I get home, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? What happened? And so I'm frazzled in a way. And he's calm. He was like, yeah, it was a black Dodge Charger. They pulled into the driveway. They backed in. They backed in as if they had been here before. So clearly this was someone who, who, who's been to your house. He got out the car. He said, I opened the door and I went out there and I said, you know, is there something I can help you with? And he said, the guy said, I'm looking for and gave him my name. And he said, I'm sorry, she's not here. And he said, he was like, oh, okay. Um, all right then. And just got in the car and drove off. And I was like, my brain stopped working because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, was it the sheriff's office trying to serve me with a lawsuit for a credit card I didn't pay? He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. And so... I'm just like, who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? How he know? One, I'm going to tell y'all how he capped. I'm going to tell y'all right now how he capping right now. I'm going to tell y'all how he capping right now. One, he's capping because... One, her ex, her ex-husband was capping because... Bro, she like... For, bro, I'm not saying older men don't drive. Dodge Charger, Hellcat Charger, whatever you want to call it, bro. Challengers, whatever. Bro, 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 bro. Be be realistic, man. Be realistic, man. Dodge Charger pulling up for her, man. Not even saying it like that, bro. I ain't trying to be rude, bro. Bro, 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 bro. bro. Out of all cars in Atlanta, this nigga say, uh, uh, okay. okay, bro. He was like, I think it was your ex. I said, what ex? He was like, the one that you had dated for two years. Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now... Fast forward to February 2021, and he's telling me, yeah, it, I think it was the ex that you had been dealing with for those two years before you met me. I said, so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years? And he was like, well, whoever it was clearly was comfortable pull, backing into our driveway, getting out the car, and was like, I'm here to see, and gave me, gave him my name. Um, that nigga and- said all this up tequila he said all this up. if y'all get tired chat we can stop watching it bro we all agree like let's finish this in the morning we can finish it in the morning i'm doing a sleep stream too i'm doing a sleep stream so i'm going i'm doing a live sleep stream bro we can finish it in the morning if y'all get tired bro but if y'all up and y'all i'm invested in this y'all like i'm in, i really want to see the end of this bro i really do Whenever y'all get tired and we come to as an agreement to finish it tomorrow, let's finish it tomorrow. So y'all getting tired. Like, when do y'all want to stop, though? When do y'all want to stop, bro? 
when do y'all want to stop watching it? Because I'm fully invested into this, bro. Like, I'm fully invested into this. So he was like, We can stop around part 20, maybe? 20? Can y'all think y'all think I can make it to 22? Ain't none of them is over 10 minutes, though, chat. None of them is over 10 minutes. So if you do the time, I mean, if you do the math, bro, it's, it's 120 right now. About what? What like five more five more parts? Four more parts? It'll be like two o'clock, right? Let me know. She's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, "No, nah, no, nah, it's cool." Um, and then just got in the car and drove off. So uh, again brain is like who who could this be so then legion says to me you know what the way that you react into this is real suspect and i'm like what are you talking about Vance, this nigga set this whole thing up Vance. that nigga paid for her nails he paid for her pedicure just for her to go and and blame this on her bro Bro set all that up. He was up, like, man. you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what, are you, what have you been up to? Now, let's go to part 19. We on 19, Chuck. Okay. Okay, part 18. Who the fuck did I marry? Oh, so he shit. says to me, the way you're acting is oh, real suspect. Shit, I, told chat. I know you said no spoiler, Bans. Voice notes, security cam, good relationship with neighbors. It say, uh, I had security cams. Dang, Chad, she caught him on a camera and nobody ever pulled up? Oh, my told God. You it was fine. I took care of it. He was like, I ain't even worried about it. He was like, obviously, that nigga didn't know that you now married, that you've moved on. And so now he knows it. But for me, it was the fact that I don't do, do pop-ups. Don't come to my house unannounced. So if someone has done that, for me, it, it automatically feels like a violation and it feels like it needs to be addressed. So it was not as simple as I already took care of it. It's fine. Let it go. No, nah, we ain't letting nothing go because you don't have my permission to show up to my house. And before this turns into something where I'm going to be on Fox 5 News, I need to address that with you because that is not okay. So he didn't like the reaction I had to the story he told me where someone basically disrespected my home. And he felt like my reaction was really suspect. So um, what I'm going to get into the little details that he did not know about. So he tells me, again, it was a black charger, a black Dodge charger. They backed into the driveway. A gentleman got out of the car and he asked for me by name and Legion said she's not here. So um, I asked him, what does the guy look like? And he said, he was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well, um, he was shorter than me. Ex-husband is about six three, six four. He was shorter than me. Um, he was brown skinned. I said, did he, have, did he have a hat on his head? Mind you, I understand that before marriage, I was a damn fool. I understand that. But every woman has that moment where you only gonna fool her but for so long. Facts. And eventually stuff puzzles start coming together for me i felt like moving into marriage certain things started coming together so i said to him um did he have a hat on his head he was like nah he ain't wear a hat so in my mind i am mentally going down a list of every possible man it could be um and it was only like four men. I had been in that house about three or four years at this point. So I knew all of the people. And I'm talking about from maintenance down to ex-boyfriends. It was a total of like four men. So when he said that 
um, it was a black charger. I immediately was like, okay, I know that crosses out one. He said he was shorter than him. All of them were shorter than him. I said, did he have a hat on his head? He said, no, that crossed out one because one in particular was a maintenance guy who always wore a hat on his head because he had like a bruise or something and he, he was just self-conscious about it. So he always wore a hat. That leaves two. So I said, was he muscular or was he skinny? So Legion's getting all frustrated. I said, just answer the question. He was like, well, he was kind of in between. And I said, okay, um... He was in between. I said, so was he light skin or was he dark skin? He was like, I told you he was brown skin. I said, was he my complexion? He said, no, he was he was brown skin. That eliminates one. So now there's one left. And yes, the one left would have been the ex that I had dated for two years. Damn, though. And so he was like, I know that, that I know it was your ex. I know it was your ex. And I was like, that don't make no sense because the ex that I... In my mind, I'm saying this. The ex that I had dated, he and I had no contact with each other. And he was not the type to just pop up at your house. That ain't his style. Not to mention, and I ain't tell Legion this, that man would not be caught dead driving a Dodge Charger. He hated Chargers. Oh, my God. A patrol car. So I didn't say anything. I just was like, that's that's weird. So what Legion didn't know is that at the time I had a security system. Damn. So I had a security Chat. system where um, anytime the front door, the garage door or the back door was open, basically any entry point, anytime it was open or closed, it would send me a text message notification. So when he's telling me all this, I'm looking at my phone and I see a notification where the front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So for example, if it says front door open at 1 p.m., front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. He's telling me the story of the guy got out the car. Um, he opened the door. He went out there. Can I help you? And the guy said, um, I'm looking for... And Legion said, no, nah, she's not here. And so the, he said the guy kind of was like, okay. And he was like, all right, thank you. And got in the car and drove off. Legion has also told me that he watched him drive off, drive out of the neighborhood. Which means because of the way the house was set up, the townhouse, he would have still been outside watching this. I could be wrong, but something in me was like that would take more than sixty seconds. So for the door what y'all think, chat? Y'all think that would take sixty seconds, chat? What you think, Benz? What y'all think, bro? What y'all think, bro? I think that'd take more than sixty seconds, bro. Somebody pull up in front of the crib. You open the door from the time you open the door. Front door open, right? The sixty seconds starts soon as you open the door. You walk out the door. Dude, get out the car. So you definitely more. To Definitely have more. been open and shut within the same 60 seconds, I was like, mm. Mm. okay. So, also, what he didn't know, we didn't have a ring door camera, but my neighbor did. Oh, God. And her ring door camera caught my driveway. It, it, the view of the camera could see my driveway as well as her driveway. Um, and so, who, whoever was coming in the door, our driveways were right. Now, remember, chat. This might be the same lady neighbor that he been saying been did that he been dealing with. So he might bring that up, chat. I'm fully invested into this, man. I don't know about you, bro, but I've been to this. Bro. So it was a per it was a perfect view of my driveway. Right. So. So she um, I had text her and I said, hey, were you home? Um, I think I texted her the next day because I said, were you home on Saturday? Da, 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 da. Right. And she said, um, no, I wasn't. What's up? You know, everything good. And I said, um, can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house um, at such and such time? And I know I, I did not tell her the reason I was asking, but I was like, is there any way that your security camera caught if someone came to my house? Um, at this time on Saturday, she's like, yeah, sure. I'll look. And so 
maybe about a couple of hours later, she texted me back and said, hey, I looked at the camera, but I didn't see anything. And I said, okay, by any chance, did it catch if someone maybe walked up the driveway? Like maybe it wasn't a car in the driveway, but someone walked up. She said, I didn't see anything with your driveway yesterday. So I said, okay. Um, and I, and I knew, I knew that something in me again, um, was like, nobody came to the house. So now here we are, um, a month and a half married. And now is when I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Right. Because no one came to the house. No black charger came to the house, pulled back into the driveway. Nobody got out the car and asked for me. Nobody was looking for me. So now I'm, I was sitting in the bedroom thinking through all this. And I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because that's what happened. I'm looking at the text messages on my phone where he's telling me someone just came to the house looking for you, but no one came. So what was the purpose of that? And then I, and then something said to me, something in me said, he wanted to see your reaction. He, he just wanted to see the reaction. You had been too calm. And so he wanted to see a reaction. So this man gas lit me like I was Georgia natural gas just to get a reaction. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part 20 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Damn. Okay, part 18, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? All right, part 20 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So after the black Dodge Charger incident, um, things were, were quiet. Legion was fine. Legion slept just fine. Me, that shit played over in my head for days and days and days. Um, on one hand, I was like, I know nobody came. My head knew nobody came to the house. My heart was like, but maybe he didn't make it up. So Come the on, head and the heart were absolutely TikTok. playing a tug of war. <laughs> because, again, I really couldn't fathom that he was making it up. But nevertheless, I filed it in the back of my mind and my little filing cap, my, my mental filing cabinet. So a few weeks later, we go out to eat at this restaurant in Atlanta. Um, it's a burger place and I'm going to do my, my best by the time I post this to put the name of the burger place um, on the screen. So we go to the burger place, eat dinner. Everything was fine. As we are leaving, he says to me, did I ever did did I ever show you where my grandmother's buried? This is the grandmother that passed away from COVID in 2020. And I said, no. I was like, we haven't been over here. And so he was like, let me let me show you. So he drives us to the cemetery, which is not far from the restaurant. He drives us to the cemetery, goes around and around, and then it comes to um like a little hill in the cemetery. And he was like, you see the headstone. The headstone had um, like a fam the family name on it. And it did not have, for example, John David Doe. It just had Doe. Okay. Right. So there were no dates on it. So it, it reminded me of just a headstone where it was probably multiple family members buried underneath it. That's what it reminded me of. And so he was like, my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there. I do recall him telling me when the grandmother died in 2020 that she wanted to be buried next to his grandfather. And so he told, he, he we're sitting in the car because we can see the headstone like on top of the hill from the car. And he tells me that that is where his grandmother and grandfather are buried. That he was able, the family was able to get her um you know, her wishes were to be buried next to the grandfather. Okay. So as we are leaving, we take a different route home. So we get on the highway. If you're from Atlanta, you'll know what I'm talking about. We get on I-75 North. Um, and we're kind of just, we're just driving around, to be honest with you. But we're taking the scenic route. We get on I-75 North because 
the reason why I remember is because when you're on I-75 North going towards Atlantic Station, on the right-hand side, you will see the Varsity. You'll see all these tall skyscraper buildings. One of the buildings has the letters NCR on the building. We, As we're coming up towards the building, he says to me, do you see the NCR building? I said, yeah. He said, the building behind it, my job bought that building. That's where we're going to have, um, we're setting up operations. And I was like, why the hell would y'all buy a condiment company in downtown Atlanta? He was like, no, we're not doing production there. It's just going to be offices. And that's where we're going to handle like the business portion. The production is still being done in Gwinnett County out in Duluth. And so I was like, oh, okay. He was like, that's where I keep the company car so i was like the company car i said aren't you supposed to be bringing a company car home and he was like i don't want to bring the company car home because it's clayton county and it's a ninety thousand dollar car and i don't know i don't want no nah, i don't want no problems so he's telling me that he keeps the company car at the build the building downtown atlanta that's behind the ncr building I barely could see what building he's talking about, but he was like, it's the building right behind it. And so he's telling me that that's he catch up. where his office is. So I said to him, oh, so cat, take me to your office. I know it's a Saturday, but shit, you wanted the VPs, right? So take me to your office. No, I had not been to his office simply because again, COVID. So I was like, take me to your office. And he was like, he was like, I can. He was like, that's no problem. So do I have the other phone? I do. So y'all are in luck. So I can maybe reenact how this goes. So he gets off the exit and starts driving towards the NCR building. While he's driving towards the NCR building, he always has kept his phone in his left pocket. This is my left hand. So he pulls his phone out. And he starts calling. He tells me he's calling Willie. Willie is supposed to be the head of security. So he's saying, oh, let me call Willie real quick to make sure that the building's open. So he proceeds. This is another phone. But he proceeds to go ahead and call Willie. He's still, we're still driving, by the way. We're still driving. I'm on the phone, you know, scrolling through Facebook, trying to figure out um, some random shit. But he's he's driving with the phone up to it. So driving with the phone, next thing I hear, hey, Willie, it's Legion. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Hey, is the building open? No, I just want to take my wife up there so she can see it and see my office. Are you up there right now? You're not? Okay, is Mr. Justin working? Okay. So is there anybody up there that can physically open the building? Because I don't think my badge is going to get me at least in the front door because of it's, it's on the weekend lock. Cat. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me know. All right. Thank you, Willie. Bye. Y'all see how I did that? He's having this whole conversation while I'm sitting in a passenger seat. So then he gets off the phone and he says to me, Willie is not working and Justin apparently called out sick. So the building is locked and my badge won't get us in the front door. He was like, Willie's going to see if there's someone else that can open the, that can open the front oh, door God. so we can actually get in. He's like, my badge will get us on the floor, but it will not get us in the front door. <clears throat> no one ever called. So when he's getting off the highway, um, he basically headache, turns Chuck. onto Spring Street. Again, there's this, there's we all kinds of shit I distinctly <laughs> remember. He turns onto Spring Street that so that he can then get on 75 South so we can go home. That nigga bear is locked in. Off <laughs> um, this shit good though, But again, this is where he's saying that he um, keeps the company car. So when we get to part 21, I'll kind of go into detail about the whole company car a little bit more. Damn, chat. All right, part, part 21, who the fuck did I marry? So the company car apparently was a charcoal gray BMW 
I believe it was a five series. It was a five series. I don't know much about the sedans. Y'all know I wanted the X5 dark blue with the cognac interior. He got the BMW 5 Series, charcoal gray. He sent me a picture of the car. So I did see a picture of the car. Um, after this whole NCR building, take me to your office, that is what he's claiming is that he left, he leaves the company car at that location. He's saying that he drives from Riverdale his buddy to Midtown, switches out cars, and then drives from um midtown uh, to Duluth. Uh, we'll see, bro. Those that don't know how Metro Atlanta is, basically Midtown would be in between where we live and Duluth. Um I only know that he left the house every day at 6:15. I know that um I never physically saw the company car come to our home. Saw a picture pictures plural um so when he told me that he got a bmw 5 series keep in mind this is after <laughs> um i had been promised a dark blue x5 so i was a bit salty i don't care if it is a company car i was a bit salty i will admit that um because i felt like you you get to drive the car that you know I really want, which is a BMW. Um, and so he would always, he would call me from the car. He would tell me, you know, yeah, I'm, um, I may, I may just, uh, I may just drive home in this car and not switch car, you know, switch back to his personal car. He was like, I don't know. He, he did that a lot. And I realize now in 2024, he did that because he knew how excited I was to actually see the car. Because shit, I wanted to test drive it myself, to be honest with you. And he knew that. So, reactions. Mm -hmm. um, so, he would he would say stuff like that. Like, man, I'm so tired. I might just drive the, the company car, go ahead and go home. And then, you know, just let me park it in a garage type thing. So eventually he stopped doing that because I didn't want to hear nothing about that car. I'm driving a Nissan and you driving a BMW after you promised me a BMW. So I don't really want to hear nothing about it. So in terms of the company car, I did see that it was, it was a, according to the pictures, a charcoal gray uh, BMW 5 Series. If you're asking me the exact model, I don't know. But I know it was a 5 Series because I know the 7 Series is slightly longer. So it was a five series sedan. Um, so after the whole situation with the cemetery to see his grandmother and grandfather's um, headstone, then there was the NCR, the office is open. Oh, it's not open. Justin ain't working. Willie ain't working. Willie is supposed to be head of security, but he ain't working. Okay. So at this point, I'm already numb. It is important for me to point out how numb I became dealing with him. Mind numbing because I just got to a point where it was like, there's always something. There's always something. So of course we're not gonna go to the office because there's gonna be something. Um, so this is the end of February. My birthday had already passed. There clearly was tension on my end not so much tension on his end so i get home a couple of weeks later we are now in the beginning of march this is something personal about me the only way you would know this is if you know me i have been dying dying to go to london and paris um i had a layover in london when i did a study abroad but is not the same. I want to go to London and be a whole tourist. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want to see Buckingham Palace. I want to see um, the Tower of London. I want to see Paris. I want to see the Palace of Versailles. This is something, if you know me, you know she wants to see Paris. She wants to see London. So I get home from work. This is the beginning of March. I get home from work and on the counter, is a folder with like a little bow on it. And I'm like, oh, what is this? Is this like mail? Like, was this something that you got at work? He's like, nah, it's a surprise for you. 
Oh God. I open up the folder. Inside the folder is like a trip itinerary. It is not an actual booked trip. It's it's like an itinerary. Um, a trip for two to go from Atlanta to London. Um, the trip was should have happened and it was it was um the uh fuck the month on there was like July. So it was a summer trip. So he tells me I'm gonna take you to London. He was like, I try I wanted to take you for your birthday, but certain things fell through. He was like, So this summer in July, we're gonna go to London. He was like, I've already made a reservation for us to stay at the Savoy. Again, there are certain things that my brain just was like, remember that, remember that. He said, I've already made a reservation for us to stay at the Savoy. I know as much as I want to go to London, y'all, I didn't know anything about the Savoy. And so I remember going to look it up because I was like, what is the Savoy? Well, apparently the Savoy is bougie, very bougie. So I was so excited. Oh God. I cannot tell you. She always excited, chat. Like, bro, you don't understand. You about to get excited again for nothing, bro. Y'all, how fucking excited I was when I saw that he had um, printed out British Airways. Like, he was speaking my language. I am one of those people. I'm a planner. So when he's saying, I'm going to take you to London, and he took the time to research flights and print it out and research the Savoy and print it out. And there were, there were different, ex not excursions, but that nigga been printing his whole life on paper, bro. Now I see what the chat saying. One thing about religion, he gon' print. That boy gon' print that paper, boy. <laughs> Tell my girl I'm hollering. Legend made a run out of money, but he ain't run out of uh ink ideas. <laughs> ink and ideas, they ain't capping, boy. No, for real. That nigga Legion ain't gonna run out of that ink, boy. He said that nigga Legion come <laughs> That nigga Legion work at a printer company. <laughs> That nigga printed out his whole life, boy. That nigga printed out the Chase Bank. That nigga printed out the checks. That nigga printed out everything, bro. That nigga's a print guy, boy. But there were different things that you could do. You could go see the Tower of London. You could go see Buckingham Palace, changing of the guard. We could go have high tea at certain places. He was like, I don't really want to go, but I know you're dying to go. So he was oh, like, God. you know I love you, and I would do anything for you. Blah, blah, black sheep, have you any wool? And so he was like, I'm going to take you to London in July. The trip did not include Paris. That's fine. But I was so excited. So excited. Oh, God. And so, this is the beginning of March. I was like, this, this is great. Hopefully, this happens. I knew I needed to renew my passport. She said, I hope this happens. You know it ain't happening. <laughs> he could have played it crazy, though, Ben. I ain't going to lie. That could have been the only thing he made happen. And he would have got her right back locked in. Like, if ain't nothing else happened, he could have made this happen and got her right back locked in. She would have forgot about the house stuff. She forgot about the nigga popping up. That's all she had to do. Passport. But let's see and if he, he did that. he was saying that he had to renew his passport as well because his passport had expired. So both of us were like, okay, we need to get on this if we're going to try to make it to London. <laughs> that nigga ain't with his passport. He ain't going to renew his passport. In July, and it's now March. They can be like, he be like, my passport got a weekend lock on it. Me being the planner I am, I think I went to work the next day and printed out the passport applications so that we could fill it out and go. Yeah, yeah. he already printed his passport. <laughs> you already know, right, Vince? No kidding. Ahead and 
and get that <laughs> process. He already um, printed done. his passport. So, um, needless to say, <laughs> something must have happened, and I don't remember what it was. Of course, of course, I did. <laughs> This is, is getting funnier and funnier, bro. She told something must have happened. Of course! <laughs> Alright, part 20 of is this the one fuck we did I Working. Went to Spring Street. Again. No, he's on this one. Bro, this shit got Passport it. applications. Passport is well. And so he was like, I'm going to take you to London in July. Duh. The trip did not include Paris. That's fine. But I was so excited. So excited. And so this is the beginning of March. I was like, this, this is great. Hopefully this happens. I knew I needed to renew my passport. <laughs> and he was saying that he had to renew his passport as well because his passport had expired. <laughs> So that both nigga, of us, that nigga already printed out like, his okay, passport. Okay, we need to get on this if we're going to try to make it to London in July, and it's now March. Me being the planner I am, right. I think I went to work the next day and printed out the passport applications so that we could fill it out and go ahead and you already did get all that, that process. You um, already done. made sure that wouldn't happen, my baby. So, um, needless to say. Something must have happened, and I yeah. don't remember what it was. We just simply didn't fill out the application for the passport. Of course. So, fast forward, we're now at mid-March. Right. Mid-March, the decision was made that my mom, who lived in Arkansas, was coming to visit us. She would right. be coming, I believe, the second week of April, and she was going to stay a week um, and then a few days. <laughs> he got that covered. <laughs> That nigga on the phone, nobody like, copy. <laughs> so like, maybe a total of nine. That nigga, that nigga on the phone, nobody like, over, copy. <laughs> Not quite two weeks, but a little over a week. So she was coming in April and I was excited. Legion was excited because he was excited to physically meet my mom. Right. He had talked to her on Zoom. He had talked to her on the phone. Right. But he was excited to physically meet my mom. Right. And my mom was was excited to physically meet her son-in-law. Right. So this is mid-March. Um, I'm going to go into part 22 where I explain what happened with Facebook Messenger? Oh, God. Part 22, who the fuck did I marry? So now we are in March. This At this point, I tapped out a few videos because I was on the game. Bro, you should have had it planned, bro. This should be a movie facts, bro. You should have had it planned on right speaker while you was on the game, bro. surprised me with the announcement of we're going to go to London is funny, for bro. I mean, This um, got me advanced. In rolling, bro. I'm talking about me advanced. It's rolling. Bro. I know Vince is rolling, bro. Why? They talk about the Legion of Lies. We definitely <laughs> didn't do any sort of trips together. So the idea was we're going to do a trip. It's about July Legion, together. the man, the myth, the monster. Um, <laughs> one thing about Legion was that <laughs> he was the guy who was like, I have nothing to hide. I don't lie. I don't like liars. Right. Um, right. If we're in a relationship, then everything should be out in the open. Right. So I've always had his cell phone passcode 
Right. Never felt the need to look through his cell phone. Right. Um, and funny enough, I can tell y'all right now, disclaimer, I will never go through a cell phone again. Mm -mm, you cheat in peace. So anyway, um, right. so one day, this is mid-March, like around March 20th. Um, so we're heading in towards the end of the month. Chat, she's not talking about him. She's talking about she went through somebody's phone in the past. And they was cheating, and she like, I'll never do that again. So that's why she ain't never go through his phone. He was in the shower. Keep in mind, my mom is coming for a visit in April. Right. So he was in the shower, and he received a text message on his phone from a woman. Right. Um, the text message, because it was a preview, so the text message was something where if you didn't know the context of the text thread, you could either go left or you could go right with it. So... Me being just curious, I opened up the phone, put the passcode in, read the text, then read the thread. Come to find out, it was a text from his aunt. His aunt and his ex share the same name. That's why I say it could go left or it could go right. right. Text was from the aunt. So um, I went, I looked at the text, went, went through the thread, nothing in there. So I went ahead, X, uh, X out of the um, messages. I see that he has Facebook Messenger downloaded. And obviously, it shows you the the number of... Um, Uh-oh. Hey, Tequila. They got to go on the Camaro show, Tequila. They got to go on that Camaro show, Tequila. Unlock that phone, boy. <laughs> that boy going to have a thousand prints in his gallery, boy. Camaro going to be like, yep, he lied. He has a thousand printer prints in his gallery. Saved. Unread messages. In the icon so it showed that he had like five unread messages so I clicked on it just being nosy right and what do my wondering astigmatism I see right so in he telling three different women he gonna get them a Maybach truck how much I want to bet his Facebook messenger is about seven women right. I can see um, their profile picture and I see their names. Right. Some of them had a preview. The ones that um, he had not read, I could see the preview of the message. Right. One in particular said, "When are you gonna come get this?" Y'all know what I'm talking about. P. So I clicked on that one first. Right. Um, and I'm reading through the thread. And so she's saying, when are you going to come get this? But earlier in the thread or further back in the thread, he had asked her, when are you going to give me the P? And she said, when lockdown is over. So from what I could piece together, he had not yet physically gotten with her. Um, but had there been no COVID, oh, he would have smashed all day, every day. Um, the other messages were in you windows, meaning the other messages from the other women were in you windows. They were not as graphic as the one between him and her. So I'm reading these messages. And what is interesting is that the person I am married to is not the person in these messages. Like this man was on some nasty shit. And I say oh. nasty not in a judgmental way but in a with me he seemed to act as if i was damn near virginal white oh and i God. clearly see evidence that you into some shit that with me you acting like nah i ain't really into that oh my god chat he telling the girl in the messages i eat the buns but he coming to her like oh i ain't eating no buns i ain't eating no buns but he texting talking all kind of crazy stuff though chat oh god he's so spooky. um i confronted him i absolutely confronted him and was like what the fuck is this if two plus two is four and five plus five is ten what the fuck is this right um and so he did not you know oh that ain't that ain't what happened blah 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 instead what he hit me with is man i was just playing around like ain't nothing happened um you know, I shouldn't have said all that, but I was just flirting. It, it ain't mean nothing. I don't even know that girl. I was just flirting. And so I'm like, is this what you into? And so he was like, no, it's not what I'm into. It was just stupid. It was stupid because I shouldn't have done it. 
So I'm going to be honest with y'all because I've been honest all this time. Right, go ahead be honest. What pissed me off the most was that here I am as a woman behaving, trying to do the right thing by him and this marriage. And you mean to tell me you out here offering your dingling to random chicks that you don't even know. I was more angry at the fact that I'm like, dude, do you know how much I have turned down in order to be faithful to your dumb ass? Mm. And I'm seeing that you basically Bro, like are you out here <laughs> acting like Fact. you got Skittles taste the rainbow. I was hurt. I was angry. Damn. I thought about getting my lick back. I ain't, I'm just being honest. I did. Um, and he, he played it off like it ain't nothing serious. It ain't nothing serious. Don't overreact. Don't get emotional. It was just dumb. He was like, I will delete the messages. I'll even delete messenger. And I, and I told him, I was like, that's really not good enough. Cause that, that's not going to fix the root of the issue. So this is where I introduced that we need to do marriage counseling. He didn't have any issue doing marriage counseling. I didn't we did not do premarital counseling, for um, but he was like, "That's fine." He was That's like, fine. I don't have no problem. My friend Josh, he a he a therapist. We can go to him, and then once we get there, we got to make sure we pay the down payment. But for the, wait, before you get too happy though, he booked us a three month therapy session, all on me, baby. All on me, baby. Two weeks later, that nigga, like something happened. I don't know. <laughs> Problem doing marriage counseling because if anything, it can help us. So I thought that okay, he may not have physically cheated, right? From what I could see on the messenger, right? He may not have physically cheated, but he damn sure got caught. You know, d doing a little something, something because they had exchanged pictures, right? So y'all know what pictures he sent, right? And I was disappointed because I right. don't like men that send. <laughs> I don't like men that send those type of pictures. But I am anyway, I'm out of there. I'm out of there. So yeah. we agreed that we would start marriage counseling. We right. also agreed that we would put on a united front when my mom got there. In other words, we were not going to argue. We, you know, just let's just act like everything is fine. But at that point, when my mother arrived in April, I could not stand him. I did not want to be, but we couldn't, um, he moved back into our bedroom because he had, he had moved into the guest bedroom when I saw the messages. Like three days before she came, he moved back into the bedroom because obviously she needed to sleep somewhere. So, um, I really could not stand him. And it was because I was busy second guessing myself, like, damn, what's wrong with me? Like, right. if that's what you into and I'm supposed to be your wife, like, let's have conversations like shit i went to fam you right i understand some stuff buddy so it, it just was one of those things where it made me second guess like what's wrong with me what did i do wrong what is it that she got that i don't um because you all out here willy-nilly you know messaging her all hours of the night because the thread went back quite a few weeks i saw it in march there were messages from december november so again, I'm just second guessing all kinds of stuff. Self-esteem taking a hit. So no, I did not want to be around him. I did not want, um, I, I, I didn't like him, period. I did not like him. I left and I would just go for a drive because driving clears my mind. I called my aunt, told her what happened. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend calling family to tell them what's going on in your marriage. Right. But I called my aunt and my aunt, lovingly was like what do you want me to say you married him you know he ain't your boyfriend y'all can't just break up that's the hard part about marriage is like i mean yeah i guess you could leave him but at the same time you married him so honey you gonna have to go back home and y'all are gonna have to figure this out she was like i can't give you advice on what you should do show. i'm sorry that this happened but you can't break but, up. Uh, but unless y'all file for the court, you married him. 